Hey guys, so before this episode starts, bit of an issue. So, Discord was very laggy for all three of us in the call, especially me during this. So even though my mic was picking up everything on my end of the recording, Jeremy and CJ could not hear me that well. And so I just wanted to let you guys know that. So I know that there may be sometimes where there's like a few seconds of silence or I have to repeat myself here and there. So I'm sorry for that. We were just having a lot of issues with lag. We we're trying to figure it out. We don't know if it's a Discord thing or what. Um, my Wi-Fi was just being wacky. So, but CJ and, and Jeremy were having issues with lag as well. So we're trying to figure out what it is. But I figured I would still upload the episode because it was still pretty good talk. But, yeah, I just wanted to let y'all know that we were having issues with the lag. So, yeah. Uh, let's just get into it. But, yeah, we were having, we were having issues. But it was still a good episode, so... Alright, Nathan Budnett, episode 22 uh, of February 2022 with two amazing guests. Lots of twos going on today. So we got uh, JX Remy here, or Jeremy. Um, you, that's all his socials right there. You can see it on the screen or for audio listeners. It's just JX Remy. And we also got CJ Hoop Talks, who is muted right now. He's got he had to go handle something right as we press start, but he should be back in a little bit. So, as you might have guessed, sure. oh yeah, you want to say anything? My bad. No, I don't. I don't got nothing to say. I'm just excited to be here again. Yeah, uh, CJ. Uh, CJ's obviously been on here a couple times already, and Jeremy's on been on here once. Uh, both amazing guests. Both amazing episodes when they've been on, so I figured I'd bring them back, especially because, as you may have guessed, this episode has to do with trades, some including the Orlando Magic, some including the Spurs, some including the Celtics, and just pretty much every team out there. So, uh, Jeremy, uh, CJ left. He should be back in a little bit, so don't worry about it, guys. But, um, yeah, these episodes are available in audio version on spotify apple podcast wherever you get your podcast and for the audio listeners these are available live over on twitch at twitch.tv slash easy gingy we are on 38 out of 50 followers trying to hit 50 by the end of the year all that good stuff and then go subscribe to youtube and all of the social medias like instagram all that just nathan but podcast or gingy um I know people don't like whenever I pop the, uh, pimp the socials, but I mean, I kind of gotta, but I've been trying to get them out faster and faster each episode. So that's why usually it would take me like five minutes to pimp the socials. That one was like 30 seconds. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> you gotta go as quick as possible, man. Yeah, man. So hopefully CJ joins back, but if not, then we got, we got Jeremy here. So, um, so, I mean, which, which trade do we want to start off first? Do we want to start with uh, the biggest one, which was the Sixers-Nets, or? And I don't know if I want to start huge or start small since CJ's not here yet. I think we should do a little bit a little bit of the smaller ones All right, we until can... we wait for him to get his reaction as well. We can we can start with the uh, we can start with Bulbul because you're you're a Magic fan and I was kind of making fun of Bulbul right. the other day because uh, man got yeah, traded man. for absolute fucking pocket change so nothing yeah nothing the, all right what so the Celtics the get trade, back like literally like a draft pick and that's, that's it pick. yeah <laughs> and then that's the thing they gave us the second pick so we a second round pick so we just traded second round picks. We just happened to get two <laughs> players in cash. The the self. I, I mean, the they, trade was for them to open up a roster spot. Yeah, it was basically just like we but need they, to get rid of them, but we don't want to waive them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but then they do that, and they don't even get a player that they actually wanted. They just got Derek White. Oh yeah. It's like, all right, well, you guys. Well, that's they the... up, and Derek White wasn't even a swap. Derek White was. He, he was an actual trade piece, so, like, they traded uh, Richardson to get White, so it was a weird trade in general. I don't know what they were doing. 
Yeah. But, all right, for the Magic, I'm the only person on YouTube that covers them. I would say this trade, it, it doesn't, it's just a, a no risk possible reward trade. It's just one of those, the Magic front office, they, they love no risk reward trades like the Markel Fultz one. No risk, only reward trade. Uh, I, I don't know who else. I just mentioned that. James Ennis was one of them. They just trade for players and then just stash them. And then if the player works out, great. If they don't, then just keep it moving. PJ Dozier got waived like a couple minutes after he got traded for. So it, the only trade piece here was Bo Bull. And the Magic president came out and he said he believes in Bo Bull. So let's see what they do with Bo Bull. I have no clue with it. I don't know, because if Mo Bull comes out here balling, then Mo Bamba's in trouble. But Mo Bamba's already probably going to get, like, a super, some crazy contract this offseason and leave our team. So, I don't even know, man. Yeah. It's, it's a weird trade for both sides, but. Yeah, I, I completely agree, man. And, by the way, I just want to say for video listeners, I mean, for video watchers, if I'm looking down on my phone, it's because I'm texting CJ because he's been, he was having yes. issues joining before and then he just had to drop so um i i, I remember on the episode with run court people were getting mad i was on my phone and i'm like i'm literally looking at stats guys <laughs> they thought i was like texting somebody it's like you really think Not that really. i'm that attractive that i can text anybody i appreciate it <laughs> but J- jeremy's the man with nah, the girlfriend here not me hey 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 hey, hey. <laughs> you're gonna put me on blast like that whoa um but yeah, that's that's also I forgot to say at the beginning of the episode. But that's why I wanted to. That's why I didn't upload on Thursday and Saturday is because I wanted to wait for Valentine's hype and Super Bowl hype to kind of die down. And now we're here talking about the trade deadline. So yes. um, it's been a few days. We've been able to just digest it. Yeah, a few days to digest it. it. Um. I'm trying to think of like which ones I can I can hop in on because like I don't want to again I don't want to do too much without CJ, but yeah. if he does take a while then we we can go ahead and yeah, discuss some of these. So um, the Kings Pacers one, what do you think of that one? Like in my hey, honest that, opinion, tell me tell me what what do you think about it? I I think they just basically gave away. This is gonna sound weird, but I feel like they just gave away Tyrese for free. Because in my honest opinion, I feel like Buddy Heald and Sabonis kind of have, like, the same similar role. Like, obviously, Sabonis is putting up, like, you know, 30, 40-point games, like, on the Pacers. But then you put him out on the Kings, and he can't exactly do that with the Kings. So, it's it, I feel yeah. like you basically took Sabonis and put him down on Buddy Heald's level. You traded a big for a big, essentially, and then gave away Tyrese with that. So... And Tyrese, um, I talked in a video that I, I do like Tyrese, but I feel like De'Aaron Fox is better. So mm-hmm. even though a lot of people hate this trade, the trade could have been worse. They could have given up De'Aaron Fox. Yeah. So they didn't do that at least. Yeah. But, I mean, you still should have tried to keep Tyrese. But, I mean, you kept De'Aaron Fox, so I, it's, it's okay, you know. If you my, gave away De'Aaron Fox, not- then... People would go My even more crazy. Is completely different. It's, it's. I would have preferred them to keep Tyrese over Fox just because Tyrese he just got here and he has loads of potential. Fox yeah. is already getting to the uh, point. Oh, he's back. Where there we go. There he is. Fox is reaching his point. That's not to say Fox isn't an All-Star caliber player. To say that he's not going to be a great player in this league, but resetting rebuilds can be frustrating. But the thing with the Kings is. This might have been one that you had to reset. Now, the thing with Sabonis is Sabonis would have fit better with Tyrese instead of with Fox just because Fox doesn't have the most reliable shot yet. Obviously, yeah. he's still developing it, and he's, he's getting better season by season. I think this year has been like a down year for him, but overall, he's still a great player. But the thing with Sabonis is, okay, Sabonis isn't an outside shooter. He's more of a pick-and-roll player. He'll drive into the – he'll drive in. He was, he, wow. Wow. <laughs> He'll drive in, and he'll he'll play his paint. He'll play his mid-range shots, but he's not really out there shooting threes like what you had with Miles Turner. When you had Miles Turner next to Sabonis, it would work just because Miles Turner's a shooter. He doesn't have to always be in the paint. Sabonis can dominate the paint, and then you both come in and get rebounds. So that I, 
now that I've seen like what three games of Sabonis on the Kings, I don't hate the trade because you got back Sabonis, who is an All Star. But I definitely would have preferred it the other way around, where they trade Fox instead of Tyrese, just because I feel like Tyrese just has a way higher ceiling and maybe a lower floor. I I just don't know. I have to. This is one of those trades that I have to wait till the end of the season. Yeah. To actually predict it. But my thing is, is if you're the Kings and you're making this trade to make the eighth seed or the seventh seed just to make it, what are you doing? Why Why even do this? Yeah. You're just going to make the playoffs just to be like, yeah, we finally made it. The reason I... It's like, what is that again? The reason I don't want to trade De'Aaron Fox away is because... I know on paper, again, and this this gets into a bigger conversation of eye test versus stats, but yep. Tyrese has the the higher assist numbers, but yes. eye test, De'Aaron is the better playmaker, in my opinion. So that's why I didn't want to get rid of De'Aaron Fox, because I feel like you could build, yeah. you, could, you could put pieces around De'Aaron better than you can put pieces around Tyrese. Um, yeah, but I mean, I agree with you, but I don't know. I just, again, like you said, we'll have to wait. Uh, we'll have to wait and see how this plays out because yeah. I mean, Sabonis, what did it, what did Sabonis, did Sabonis play the other night? I know the Kings played the Nets the other night, but did Sabonis play? Let me check. Yeah. He's played, uh, three games with them. I think now maybe two. Yeah. I want to see. But then again, what I, he scored. I get why they traded Reese away. It's because they traded him because Sabonis and Fox are more on their own timeline compared to Tyrese. Yeah. Tyrese, he's, he's way younger than both of them. Yeah. So I understand why you move on from him instead of Fox. You're good, so TJ. You can pair these two with similar ages. Um. Yeah, I just looked at his stats. He, they're they're definitely gonna take a minute to uh to adjust to each other. Because it wasn't just Tyrese and Buddy Heald. Uh, or, I, I mean, it wasn't just Sabonis. Like, the uh, the Kings got, like, uh, Justin Holiday and, like, all them as well. Um, and so they had Justin Holiday uh, playing as well. And Justin Holiday and Sabonis both only had seven and nine points. So it's going to take a minute for them to get adjusted to each other. But they have DiVincenzo, who they also got, who is already scoring... 12 points on his own so i mean do we want to now that cj's here do we want to get into the the dante divincenzo one or man we let's do it hey, you already know how i feel about that man. you you like dante divincenzo didn't you or did you not like him i don't remember yeah yes i do because literally every time when a bus guard get injured dante he can step it up he'll be in that place I think they missed him in the playoffs. I feel like the Bucks won the trade though, and a lot of people disagree with me because a lot of people were like, "Oh, the Bucks I got." got... I gotta, I'm getting like a lot of lag on your end, or my end. You hear me? Yeah, I I can I hear, hear you. you. Um. Oh, you can hear me. Oh, I can... you want my input? Yeah, There's let no... me do that too, cause I'm not even gonna lie, bro. I don't know. Internet has been crazy right now. Yeah, Discord been bugging, bro. Discord been bugging. Yeah. But, uh, go ahead with DiVincenzo, CJ, while I try and figure this out. All right, so Dante DiVincenzo. Well, I mean, it's more of those players you wish you didn't get traded. He didn't get traded because he's like, you know, he's been on the bus for a long time. He knows the system. You know, he's like a two-way, like a 3 and D. At best, you know what I'm saying? Not probably the one of the best three and Ds, but he's a three and D player. Well, I mean that's all you really can say about Dante Divincenzo. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like good perimeter defense. If he on the inside, you know Ooh. interior defense. Uh, can knock down a three occasionally more than most. You know. And it's just one of those players you just want to, besides uh, Giannis, especially when they go in the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? But, I mean, didn't they get uh, Serge Ibaka off that trade yeah. of Dante Diagrinta? They did? Yeah, they did. Which, yeah. That's, so, I mean, I love you love that trade? I 
I like the fit of a Baca. Obviously, you prefer a Baca yeah. three yeah. years ago. That's why I said. That's why so I said the Bucks solid. won the trade, and everybody disagrees with me. The Bucks needed a big man because they got rid of PJ Tucker, but they got now they have a Baca. So they even though he's not as good as PJ Tucker, because I mean PJ Tucker was just a monster on defense for the Bucks that they needed in the in that playoff run. But still, a Baca is better than no. A Baca is better than no big man. You know. True. And yeah. Brooklyn has been out for a long time. Yeah. Is that, huh? Brook Lopez, he's been out for a, for a minute now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the least... only thing I really have to say about that, like, Sergi Baca, is really the height difference. You know, um, obviously Giannis is, you know, obviously taller than Sergi Baca, and he's like a, a inch uh, higher than Bobby Portis. So I don't know. And they'd be running sometimes where Giannis actually is the center more than Bobby Portis and uh, Serge Ibaka. And they really, like, if we're, not talk- if we're not talking about positions and, like, terms of how they're playing, Giannis is playing more center than Ibaka, um, than Portis. Ibaka didn't do his debut yet. But, um, yeah, yeah, than Portis than ever. Like, Portis, he plays center more as a second unit more than the first yeah. unit, you know? Right, yeah, yeah, I mean, so. typically they just put Giannis on their best big man, and that usually yep. has to be, mm-hmm. that's usually the center. It's typically not the yep. power forward. All right. I, which makes a lot of sense. Hopefully Discord starts working a little bit better. I, I, I went through and, like, I deleted a bunch of stuff that was running in the background, so. Um... Yeah, uh, I, I agree with everything that y'all said. Like, I I know I keep saying that, and people are, I know some people watching may be like, oh, you're just, agree- you're, you know, you're just agreeing with everything they're saying. But that's why I have these guys on, because I feel like they have good takes. So it's like, oh, if I just say I'm agreeing, it's like, that's the whole reason they're on, is because, like, they have really good takes. Oh, you're, you're, live with, you're live on Twitch? What's up? Yeah, I'm live. You're, you're live on Twitch? Yeah, here, let me... Right, um, here, I'm going to end stream I'm and just record it. You what? Nate, I'm going I'm to throw you under the bus real quick. Yeah. Since, since you got me on Twitch. Um, I remember you're saying, from your your own personal Instagram, that you said, Houston and Wizards Russell Westbrook was trash. And I said what? And left OKC, you said... And I quote, Wizards and Houston Rockets, Russell West. All right. We should be back. I got right. I got I everything you were saying. Yeah, I got you. So CJ's trying to call me out because I said that I didn't like Westbrook on the Wizards. But, yeah, I just, I, I don't know what to tell you. I know it was a bad take, but I just didn't like him as a fan. I mean, he was performing, yeah. But I mean, I just didn't like him. <laughs> I didn't like him. I mean, he was he was essentially a good player. Like was, on that Wizards squad, was, he was good. He was good on the Russ. Wizards. It was literally the Rush, Russ and Bill show. More of a Russ show. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what to I say mean, about that. That was a while ago. That was old Nate, CJ. That was old Nate. <laughs> We didn't do it last time. All right, you want to talk about a I bad take? Go. No, you want to talk about a bad take, Jeremy? I wanted you to. I wanted you to be on to hear this. This man said Kyrie is better than Kobe. I said no. no CJ no. said He's speaking out of context. Kobe. I said Kyrie is a better skill than Kobe. What is Do the difference? What is the difference between saying better and better skilled? If you have sk- more skills, then First you're better. Off, y'all was trying to argue skill. No, no. Y'all said defense is a skill. Defense is not a skill. You can be the most leastful skill. That wasn't me. That was buckets. But hey, that's, that's more true. about IQ game. That is true. I wasn't arguing about any of that. That was buckets in the chat saying, like, defense is a skill and everything. But... Kobe is Kobe, bro. We were literally just talking last episode with you about Kobe's impact on the league. All Kobe right, changed talk, the real league. Talk. Real talk. Who would you have? Uh, who's better offensively skilled? Kobe or Kevin Durant? 
I don't know, probably KD. KD's right, what about Kobe James Harden and Kobe? Ever. James Harden and Kobe? Kobe. Kobe or James Harden? I'm taking Kobe. James Harden and yeah. Kobe. Who who you picking? I'm taking Kobe. Because James You're Harden. Kobe, the man, I got to go with Kobe. The man who can travel all the way to Europe and get away with it. Because James Cause Harden. One kick? James Harden needs an ISO Bro, around just, him. If James Harden doesn't have an ISO around him, then he's like he can't do anything except James get free throws. Look, look, look. Yo, James Harden is getting getting to the free throw line is a skill. James Harden is a better offensively skill than Kobe. This Jimmy man just one. said getting to the I offense. I cannot agree with this Jimmy man. Just said nah. the, CJ, you yeah. just. CJ straight up just said getting to the free throw line is a skill. Ask any yeah. other NBA fan if that is a <laughs> okay, skill, and they will say I'll it's admit. a flopper. You have to be good to get to the free throw line, obviously. But, like, I'm not going to put James Harden's getting to the free throw over Kobe's footwork. <laughs> exactly, bro. It's not comparable. Kobe's not a one-dimensional guy. Kobe... Hit you in the paint, mid range, and three pointer. I, I I can't can't go with James Harden over Kobe. Yeah. And I think he just cut off too, right? Yeah. He, me, and him both have been in and out. So. Um. Okay. Yeah. We'll figure it out. It's all good. So speaking of Westbrook, though, we brought up Westbrook a second ago. Are you surprised that he didn't get traded, or were you kind of expecting him not to get traded? I'm not surprised at all. Who is going to trade for a $50 million contract next season? Yeah, that's a good point. I saw, um, I will I will that's say I'm surprised that Christian Wood and uh, uh, John Wall didn't get traded. They, uh, was it to nah, the, was it to the Hornets? I think it was the Hornets. They offered uh, to the Hornets and the Hornets said no. Um, yeah. But, but I think it's. The Rockets were doing what they needed to do. It was just unfortunate that the Hornets said no. But the yeah. uh, the Rockets are trying to get rid of John Wall, who already isn't playing. And then they need to get rid of Christian Wood because Christian Wood is complaining that the team isn't built around him when it's just like, obviously the happy. team's not going to be built around you. I would, I would be just as upset. I'm over here sold on playing with James Harden. He gets traded beginning yeah. of the season. Of course he's upset. And then the thing with John Wall, they they don't want to play him. I I thought, hey, I play John Wall a little bit just to help Jalen Green get better shots, cause yeah. every shooting guard needs a great point. Yeah. Bradley Beal's job would be so much better if he had a great point guard. So John Wall can help Jalen Green become a better player just by showing him what good shots are and setting him up to get good shots. Yeah. I got I got complete. I, I say play the guy. I got complete deja vu because, like, that's literally, like, a conversation we had last time you were on. We were talking about what, what should the Rockets do with John Wall. And you were saying, uh, you were saying play John Wall so Jalen Green can, like, pick up skills and everything. And then I was yeah. saying, I was saying um, I could see the other side of it where it's, like, play Jalen Green more so he learns those skills through, like, trial and error. But, I mean, I see both, so yeah. I don't really know which way to go on that. Or just play them together. That's honestly the yeah play them together. See where that takes you. Um. And the thing is. Yeah, go ahead, bro. You good? Yeah. You like there for a sec. You were saying the thing is. Uh, the thing is, is John Wall isn't gonna win you twenty games or ten games. You're still gonna have the worst three records in the NBA with John Wall on your team. So I, you did it last season. It's gonna happen again this season. So might as well play the guy. Yeah. All right. So I'll just go ahead and get into this because I mean, C C J has been in and out, but oh boy, the big one, Net Sixers trade. I'm gonna let you just go off for however long you need. If you take the whole hour, if you take 15 minutes. Whatever you want to say about the Sixers Nets trade, bro, and then I'll give what I want to say about it. Just right. do, who do you think First won off, the trade? Who do you do you think it was good? What do you think the impact will be on both teams? Just All right. 
I'm, I'm gonna start with who I don't love for them. I'm gonna start off with Philly. I don't love James Harden next to Joel Embiid, and I'm gonna tell you why right now. So James Harden is gonna be playing with the second most dominant center in the NBA. If we're talking about like literal dominance, Joel Embiid is probably the most dominant. Jokic is one of the most skilled overall centers, right? Embiid yeah. is the most dominant, okay? So look, you pair James Harden with Joel okay. Embiid. We've seen MVP James Harden. Uh, We've seen MVP back. Joel Embiid. Well, we're seeing MVP Joel Embiid. There he is. So look, you put these two together. It's a beautiful mix. It's beautiful. But the thing is, is how do we know that James Harden isn't going to be stepping on Joel Embiid's toes? And how do we know Joel Embiid isn't going to be stepping on Harden's toes? Joel Embiid is used to a point guard that gives him the ball and gets out the way. Ben Simmons was not shooting threes for Joel Embiid. Let's just give him the ball and go to work. James Harden is going to be taking 15 to 20 shots a night. I completely agree, bro. Like, I was... I'm doing a video on the Nets soon, and I'm going to talk about, like, the problems we had in Brooklyn might be the exact same problems we see in Philly. Harden wants an ISO game around him, and he can't... He has to accept the fact that he is not the same star that he was a couple years ago. Like, he he used to be, like, a... still be that star he can still be that star but the problem is now we have more stars in the league and it's like okay you gotta mesh with people bro and for the like the past five or so years like minus the the rockets era he was not meshing with people he did not like okc he was having problems with kd and then once uh westbrook came to to the rockets him and Westbrook had to mesh off of each other. It's like Harden basically wants to be the only player on the team. And th- he had that issue with the Nets. He, like, I'm sure you saw that tweet. He was rolling his eyes when ISO plays were made for KD. And then I feel like it's going to be the same thing in, in Philly. Like, a play's going to be made for Embiid, and Harden's going to be like, why not me? Yeah. Um, is. Anything else it's, on that or what? Man, I don't I don't mind the trade. I like I like it, but it's just it's gonna be an adjustment. If Harden couldn't really adjust but then again, I can't say much about Brooklyn because they only played like less than ten games, maybe less than twenty games together, so it's such a yeah. difficult sample size to put together. They played sixteen to games Harden, together, yeah. See sixteen games together. It's it's a huge mess, and at least Harden will be playing with just one superstar rather than two more. Yeah. So it can be good. And a hey, honestly, this is gonna be the best point guard Joel Embiid has ever played with. Because if we're being honest, yeah. Harden is gonna play the point guard. He's not gonna be their shooting guard. He'll be their point guard. Yeah. So he's gonna be one of the best playmakers Embiid has ever played with. Yeah, I'm not saying it's a bad trade. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. Um, I'm not. That's true. I'm not saying it's a bad trade. I think the trade is good for both teams. I'm just saying Harden has to be yeah. careful. Harden and Philly have to be careful that they don't run into the exact same problem with Harden that the Nets did. But like you said, he's he only has Embiid now. He doesn't have KD, yeah. Kyrie, Patty Mills, you know, how DeAndre Jordan, whatever other superstars you want to like name, which that's saying that Patty Mills and De- DeAndre Jordan are superstars but you you get what i'm saying um yeah but as for the nets i mean uh what do you think about the nets side of it all right you can just go ahead and talk i'm gonna go blow my nose real quick so all right all right for the nets i love this trade i love this trade for the nets i love it more for the nets than i do for the sixers but i will say sixers are extremely lucky that they got James Harden in return for Ben Simmons because you got to remember Ben Simmons didn't even play a game this season He's been sitting out this whole time. So Daryl Morey. He had the Kings trade in his back pocket He could easily trade it for Tyrese or someone like that But no, he got James Harden and look I will say he had to give up Seth Curry and he had to give DeAndre uh, DeAndre Drummond Which those are vital pieces to his team, but you didn't have to give up Tyrese Maxey or Matisse Thybul so in reality, the fact that you were able to get okay, James Harden, yeah. all right, we talking about the Nets. I'm talking about how I love this trade more for the Nets than for the Sixers, but that's not discrediting 
how great of a trade this was for the Sixers. Because Ben Simmons didn't even play this year, and you flip Ben Simmons into James Harden, which is in, insane yeah, value. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, that, for a guy that he's saying that the Nets won that trade. No, no, the Nets don't even. From from history standpoint, the Nets they can't even drive. When, when that, is the last time you heard? <laughs> when the last time you heard a stud coming from the Nets? And that's the thing when they draft, it's second round picks that turn out to be good players. Their first round picks are never good players. Uh, Except for Jared Allen. Jared Allen. Wait, was yeah, Jared that Allen was, first exactly. Round? Yeah, he, yeah, I don't, Jared I don't Allen, remember. He was a late bird. pick. I mean, recently, yeah. Recently, yeah. But they're not historically known for like drafting these studs that grow on their team. They grow on other people's teams. Exactly. And they're a big market. All they got to do is buy players. They don't got to draft anybody. Yeah. But no, I was saying, Simmons... Next to KD and Kyrie is a mix I love. And then you also have Patty Mills and Seth Curry. And now you have Andre Drummond coming off your bench for the center position. Yeah. it's This trade was great for them, especially because of all the pieces they just got back. Yeah, I, that, I think that's the, the main thing like people are forgetting is that they didn't just get Ben Simmons back. They got Ben Simmons, Seth Curry, Andre Drummond. They got like four fucking players. And CJ... What is the main argument that Nets fans had against the Bucks series? If if they were healthy. And so now, your biggest problem from building that super team... Again, I'm going to talk about this more in a, in a Nets video coming up. The biggest problem with building a super team is you put all your eggs in one basket. KD's injured right now. Kyrie's full-time. Harden was gone. Or Harden was traded now. You know... All of your big three are basically yeah. out right now. And that was the issue in the playoff series is like, you know, if Kyrie and Harden were healthy, you know, sign and seal, it's done. Well, they weren't. And you didn't have any bench depth. So you had like nobody p to pick up the pieces. Well, now you got Patty Mills, Seth Curry, Andre Drummond, DeAndre Jordan. Like you got all this bench depth now. Um, and... As for just Ben Simmons, um, Ben Simmons on his own, if we're just talking like explicitly about him, I think he'll be good for the Nets because CJ has said me say this in the in the group chat multiple times. By the way, Jeremy, if you want, uh, after we're done recording, I'll get to I'll get with CJ if you want to be added into that. Um, but I said multiple times in the group chat, Ben Simmons adds defense to the Nets. And defense is something that the Nets need because a lot of people say, you know, Ben Simmons is a drama queen. Ben Simmons can't shoot. But you know what he can do? He can block shots because the man is like Giannis size. And so the Nets, their biggest asset is outscoring people. You know, they would have like 150 to 140 games like it was an all-star game because they were nobody was playing defense. It was just back-to-back -back basket, seeing who could score – more the fastest and that was basically the Nets whole game now you have actual defense on the Nets a little bit obviously KD has a little bit de of, of defense but his main asset was he can fucking put up 50 when he needs to and you know it's Ben Simmons he, uh, again I'm, I'm sort of saying the same thing repeating myself but Ben Simmons is like what like 611 or something 610 um, and so he can, he can fucking block shots and he can play defense. He was up there. Um, I forget which year, but if you look at like the defensive player of the year ladder, Last year. he was like right Last behind. Year. Yeah. He was right behind Rudy Gobert and like Draymond Green and like all of them. Like he was up there. He has good fucking defense, but the problem is everybody only remembers him for the Hawks se uh, series. Like that's, they just have like recency bias that he's a bad player. He's in the NBA for a fucking reason, guys. Like, yeah. Yeah, that um, that Hawk series really did ruin his career. Yeah. yeah it, it did. It did hurt him a lot. It did. Yeah. That hurt his confidence mostly. I yep. will say. He, he didn't want to play. No. Yeah. And it's like you—you you don't want to play. It was like yeah, I've never seen go, a player do that. Like, never seen a player do that. Wait. So um. Who do y'all blame for the Ben Simmons uh, breakout? Do y'all blame, I'll say, the coaching 
for uh, him, you know, the coaching, because as soon as the uh, or the front office, the front office, I don't know why I'm, like, burning out words. The front <laughs> office or Joel Embiid? Which one, which one y'all blame? Like, for him sitting out or what? Like, the drama? You no, know, just in him. No. Yeah, that whole season with Ben Simmons, other than him, like, playing good defensively, he was getting cut out the rotation. Not cut out the rotation, but he was getting limited with the ball touches. And every time he got the ball, he was forced to pass the ball more than him driving in and scoring in anything. So I'm saying, like, who who do you blame? You blame Doc Rivers? Do you blame the front office? Do you blame, uh, do you blame Joel? I have a weird take on this. I blame none of yeah. them. You know who I blame? The NBA media. You say who you blame? I said I have you a weird... blame NBA media. Because, because it's the same thing we were just talking about with the Hawk series. Everybody remembers them for him for the Hawk series. Everybody remembers him for the Hawk series. But uh, yeah. before that, there were already talks, and I'm, I'm watching my bars, so that's why I'm repeating myself, so that hopefully they the they catch all this um yeah but before even before the hawk series there were plenty of articles that were saying what do the 76ers do do the 76ers build around what are you doing cj with your teeth (laughs) the um (laughs) do do the hawks or i mean do the 76ers do they build around Embiid or do they build around simmons and there were people arguing and arguing and then it became uh and I feel like they were just kind of testing it out, like by limiting Simmons' minutes, giving Embiid a little bit more room, seeing what each each of them can do to figure out, okay, who do we build around? Um, and obviously, that's that's a that's a front office's job to to look at that and decide that. But whenever you're getting hounded on by the media, you know you got to figure it out. And then the uh, and then the Hawk series happened, and they didn't really have to make the decision anymore. They were just like, all right, well, Simmons sucks now. I guess we're building around Embiid. You know, so. Well, well, for me, personally, I really think the front office really got to Ben Simmons. Because as soon as Daryl Murray got hired, not even a month went by. Ben Simmons and Trey Talks. I was like, dang, Daryl, you know, Daryl Morey, he was pushing, now he finally got James Harden, but he was pushing that agenda since, like, damn near two years ago. Then then they signed Doc Rivers, who Doc Rivers didn't even believe in him, you know? So, I mean. true. Yep. By, By the way, did you know, I did my own research on this. I don't remember how I found this out. I think I heard this from watching ESPN. I was watching other, like, talk shows, but there was a trade that was supposed to happen between, uh, I think, Houston and Ben Simmons two years ago, and it just fell through. What is yeah, that? I is that your that. Dog? Yeah. He was freaking all over me yeah. while I'm trying to record, and then I put him down, and now he's just slumped. <laughs> <laughs> well, the trade fell through. Ben Simmons was a, was supposed to be on Houston already, and yeah. it just fell through. It fell through yeah. completely. Uh, I think Daryl Morey, yeah, Daryl Morey, he, he wanted this to happen. This, this this trade was bound to happen eventually. I think, like, when it just came down to it, and he just loved, he loved James Harden. You see him on his Instagram post. You yeah, know, bro. You know, you know, yeah. You know, you know, <laughs> Like, he has a whole Instagram post with Ben Simmons posted. I mean, not Ben Simmons. James Harden posted a... Right off the plane. It's, it's crazy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Basically. Basically. Um, so, yeah, man. That's, that's who I blame for the whole 76ers thing. But real quick, if Jeremy doesn't have... Oh, I'll ask Jeremy if he has anything to add on that. But if not... I literally just got the notification from Clay and the Spurs fan, so we can talk about it real quick. Greg Popovich just admitted on the record that the Spurs are rebuilding. So, I mean, I was just talking about the Spurs rebuilding by trading Derek White, building around Primo, getting those draft picks, and now it is official. Pop confirms we are rebuilding, baby. 
Are you well, surprised? Nathan. What's up? Wait, Jeremy, you just gonna say something? I was just gonna say, are you... You should be happy they finally decided to do this. That's what I'm saying. I'm happy. I'm hyped. We're rebuilding, bro. I love Primo. I'll freaking. I've. I've. Tr I'm trying. I'm trying to get a Fiesta Primo. Fiesta Primo jersey, but they're sold out everywhere. Ugh. Yeah, they are sold out. I'm not even gonna lie. Uh, so about that, Nathan. Look, I'm gonna be honest with you, cause. Are you sure they trying to build around Primo or are they trying to build around Dejounte Murray? I'm not. I'm not saying. I want you to honestly answer me that. I'm not saying that they're rebuilding around Primo. I'm saying I want them to rebuild around Primo. I want okay. a full Wait. young roster. I want Whoa. Primo, Chet, Whoa. uh, Holmgren, and another uh Yo, shooting guard. Look, I want like I'm I want all twenty right I I want all twenty twenty one to like twenty twenty four players. I'm trying to tell you right now, as of right now, building around Dejounte is smarter than ever building around Primo. As of right now, I'm not saying maybe in the future Primo can prove himself to be a better player, but as of right now, how old is Dejounte? I, I gotta think check. Even building around Devin Vassell is better. I gotta check DeJounte how how old is Dejounte? I think he's twenty five. That sounds. He's surprising. been in the league for a minute. I know. What he is twenty five. All him. right, my bad, my bad. <laughs> yeah, build around yeah, Dejounte. Build around Dejounte. For some reason, yeah. no. Yeah. Listen, yeah. for some for some reason in my head, I thought like Dejounte was like in his thirties. And so I thought he was like Bro. old, but nah, he's twenty five. Build around Dejounte. For some reason, I thought he was old. Bro, That's why I was like, get team. You didn't know this. I know, bro. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this clown. Is your favorite team. I'm gonna get clown. <laughs> but I thought Dejounte was older. That's why I was saying I want like all new young people. But Dejounte ain't, ain't even that old. So build around Dejounte. Our, our whole starting lineup is young. I think we got the youngest team in the NBA. How young do you want to go? I'm saying, I'm saying, okay, I'm saying, uh, wait, what you saying, Jeremy? I can't hear you. Who you say got the youngest lineup in the NBA? I, I think we do. It's rather we do or the Rockets do. It's one of the in between. The Rockets might have it. I'm, I'm a Spurs fan. Me and him both Spurs fan. guys. Think, wait, no, in the picture. Right, I'll, I'll let you know this. Teams. I'll let you know huh? this. The Orlando mm -hmm. Magic had. The youngest starting lineup in NBA history ever. You want to know where I heard about that. Yeah. I heard From the that. beginning of the season to now, that's the youngest starting lineup ever. Lord. With Cole Anthony, Franz Wagner. Yes. I'm yeah. saying. All right. This is and what I'm. Ridiculous. That's the only thing about going too young. Bro, if you go too young, it's just you hope someone is a breakout player. Yeah. I'm, I'm, this is what I want. And CJ gonna roll his eyes at me. This is the starting five I want, bro. All right? Oh my god. DeJounte Murray, Joshua Primo, Devin Vassell, Keldon Johnson, Chet Holmgren. How are we gonna get Chet? Bro. Right now, we're not even top three. Bro, top you five. gotta lose every game from that one. That's <laughs> <No>. the <interesting. laughs> What? <laughs> I Can want Greg Popovich. You're not losing every game, yeah, bro. Greg Popovich, he's... we're four wins away from the record. Four wins. Lose, you don't lose, bro. Four wins. Let's get this record and then win everything else. We need four wins. That's all we need. <laughs> we need four wins. I don't care if we go on the craziest losing streak after we get those four wins. Exactly, so bro. Like, like, like we. I'm fine of just losing every game after we get those four wins. Like, Pop, go ahead. You, you won your thing. Have a happy ring, bro. Yeah. If you know he retires, thing? what do you do then? Oh, that's a whole discussion, bro. We've had that discussion on the channel multiple times. What happens when Pop retires? Keep it moving. Yeah. I wanted Becky Hammond really bad, but... Um... But speaking of the Spurs, though, uh, since we got CJ in here, CJ, what do you think of the Derek White trade? 
You there? What did you say? I said, ah, I keep cutting out. Ah, you're lagging. All right, now I got full bars. Real quick. Fuck. <laughs> I keep trying to wait while I'm on full bars and then it cuts out again. Uh, what do you think of the Derek White trade? Oh, the Derek White trade? Oh. Man, you know what's so crazy? I, I'm just lazy to do a damn YouTube video. That's, that's the <laughs> whole you. point. I feel you. <laughs> yeah, uh. Yeah, that had, I obviously want to talk about it. It's just. As soon as I got home, every time I get home, I'll be. You see this big bed right here? Like, I yeah. get home and I'll be like, hell no. I can't even do it. <laughs> Obviously, I'm sad that Derek White got traded. But you you know, the best trade that came out through that deadline is that we traded Drew Ubens. Yeah, I know a lot of people that worship Drew. I, I know a lot of people that really like Drew, and I was. I, I thought he was mid at best. Yeah, I don't know why. He's not, like, it's just, he's not, he's not good. No, he, All right. he's, he's not. Alright, real quick while I got full bars and CJ's here. Kyrie versus Kobe, bro. Kyrie versus, Kyrie versus Kobe. <laughs> Here we go again. Oh my god, stop this. <laughs> Kyrie. Back, your, back yourself Kyrie up. Is more skilled. Skilled. Skill, not better. Kobe. Define that Kobe. though. What do you mean, okay. like more skilled? Like Kyrie has better ways of scoring the bucket. Kyrie has better way of handles. Kyrie has better ways of passing the ball. Even though people really, un really underrate this man, Kyrie playmaking. Kyrie has better ways of. Well, I won't say finishing. Well, I mean no finishing. But not dunking, if that makes sense. But, bro, Kobe's Kobe. He changed the league. How did Kyrie change Whoa, the Kobe's league? Kobe's Kobe. Kyrie's Kyrie. How did, how, did, how, did, how did Kyrie change the league? Did Kyrie make a I name for himself? Did Kyrie ever make what? a name? Did Kyrie ever make a name for himself like Kobe did? No. Well, I mean, if you want to talk about influence, now a lot of people, they dribble a lot because of Kyrie. And that is true. I say it's more, didn't Kyrie say he's, he, didn't, didn't Kyrie say he influences game around AI? I feel like it's more AI. I mean, yeah, that's AI, but I'm talking about the younger generation. You can't say that, Co you can't say that Kyrie didn't influence anybody because we don't know. Who Kyrie influenced yet? But who do you think influenced people more, Kyrie or Kobe? You said what? I said I said who do you think influence who do you think influenced people more, Kyrie or Kobe? There you go, easy. Well, I mean, Kobe has a better mentality, but influence has nothing to do with skill. It'll always be Kobe because Kobe won more. Exactly. Right, winning and skill is so different. But winning. Will impact who you influenced. Obviously, all right, yeah, that's that's influence. That's, that's all I'm talking trying to about say. Skill, all right, who's now, better skill, skill T know. Mac or Banu? I can't wait till I make the highlight for this. All right, Banu <laughs> won more. No, Manu you won missed more. the more. Talking about like influence on little kids. All right, so T Mac didn't influence more kids than Manu. No. Hey, you gotta remember, Manu's from Argentina. He got the whole country yeah. behind him. I can't, Literally. I can't, I can't yeah. wait until yeah. I make the highlight for this uh, video. Nah, the dude, right. here, here's a better example. Who's, here's a better example. Hey, look, I'll tell you about my boy right here. Listen <laughs> it, up. It's just gonna be a clip of CJ <laughs> saying Kyrie's more skilled, and then what did he say? <laughs> who, 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 all right, all right. I have a better example, all right? So who, who's better skilled? Isaiah Thomas. I'm talking about the one back in the Detroit Pistons days. IT. IT or who? T-Mac. T-Mac, right? T-Mac. So who had, who had a better influence in the game? T-Mac or Isaiah Thomas? I don't know, bro. 
I just feel that's, like that's Kobe's, not a lot of points Kobe's I'm Kobe. Like Isaiah All right, I'll let you have your Kyrie I, I, take. I mean, I'm not, I'm not questioning influence right now. I'm talking about skill. Skill, T Mac is more skilled. Yeah, we're, we're talking about skills, all right? I, I mean, if we're, if we're talking about winning. T Mac, yeah, he's just not in the discussion. Him and Vince Carter. No, at all. You talk? Yeah, sh- not at all. Mm-hmm. But the reason why T Mac injuries, man. If it wasn't for injuries, he would have gotten somewhere. And if he didn't play for the Magic, or if the Magic did something for him, he'd be in a way better conversation right now. My man was playing with Ty Lue. Of course he was gonna. Of course the team was gonna kill him. I think his best year, he had a chance of any winning thing, like really, really winning, was in his Houston days with Yao Ming. And they went on like this crazy win streak and. They just fell apart with injuries. Even then, bro, they still couldn't keep stay on the court. Yep. This may sound silly, but and then out of nowhere, he reaches the finals with the Spurs. This may sound dumb, yeah, but y'all talking about McGrady, Ray right? Ray yeah. Ray oh, yeah. I just wanted to make sure. Ray Allen ruined dreams. For so some cold. reason, you said. He was like, right for some reason, you said T Mac and didn't register. Ah, uh, hang on. I keep cutting out. For some reason, you said T-Mac, and it didn't register in my head, and then I was like, oh, Tracy McGrady. So, yeah. yeah we were talking about who was better skill. That's really it. Yeah. Yeah. That's really it. All right, so real quick, probably the most depressing trade. Uh, hang on. Let me Let me leave and then co- join back because it, it's being weird. All right. <laughs> I guess so. Alright. Did y'all enjoy those five seconds where it was y'all's podcast? <laughs> it took me so long, bro. Yeah, what do you mean, crazy. took so long? It was like five seconds. Nah. <laughs> that, took, that, that took years, bro. I'm old. <laughs> Alright. Um, I'll still fuck it up. Whatever, we'll go with it. Real quick. You said what? Real quick, um, what do y'all think of the most depressing trade, uh, Portland? The most depressing what? You said what? Oh my god. What do y'all think of the most depressing trade, the Portland trades? Um, makes no obviously, sense. Obviously, uh, when you look at the assets, I think. I think they scheming. They freed up a bunch of cap space that they can now use. Hold on, give me a second. This is what they're going to do, watch. This is what they're going to do. Okay, first of all, their argument for doing all this is to free up cap space. Who the hell wants to play in Portland, first of all? (laughs) You got Damian Lillard. All right, that's it. That's all you got, Damian Lillard. Who wants to play in Portland? Who... Nobody wants so I assume yeah. this is what they're gonna do. Off season's gonna roll around. DeAndre Ayton wants a max contract. Suns don't want to give him a max contract, so let's just overpay, give DeAndre Ayton a max contract, and hope maybe he comes to Portland. All right, so now let's say theoretically, you sign DeAndre Ayton to a max contract. So now your team is just gonna be DeAndre Ayton and Damian Lillard. Now who do you sign? Because you got to remember, you're a small market. It may, I don't understand what they're doing. And then it's like the tr- trades that they make, they didn't even hold any pieces. You could have at least hold, held on to Nikhil Alexander-Walker, who would have been a decent player yeah. next to those two guys. It was like, what are, you, what, what are you doing? And maybe it's because of the GM that they have. It's an interim GM. So what does he know about <laughs> yeah. Portland? I, I, I hate that they got rid of... He knows ball. Jeremy knows ball. He knows, he knows his fans. That's you know, why I got him on here, bro. That's why I got him. <laughs> he knows his fans. I, I keep it real with you. I got it off the JJ Reddick podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got it off of JJ Reddick? Oh, well. Nah, I, I, be, I listen to him 
every episode, well, most of them. Yeah. I mean, it's true. Who's going to play in, who says Portland, Portland, Portland? Yeah, I just hate that we, uh, oh, I just hate that we, here, let me, let me turn off my camera and see if that helps. I just hate that freaking they got rid of Covington. Yep. Robert Covington is overrated. Yeah, what? I agree with that. I agree with that. I, I feel like he was a good asset for Portland, at least. Like, even if he's not that good, like, no. anywhere no, else. He wasn't. No. He, he will he, be on the Clippers. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Cause Covington they, they led in successful. every category for them. You said what? Covington led in every category for Portland. That's what do you mean every the issue. Category? <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> also, if, if, if Robert Covington... I guess you got a point, play, Jeremy. That's, yeah, you got a point. <laughs> there's there's an issue there. And that's why he's having, like, such a down... No, hey, but Norman Powell, down. though. Norman Powell. Yeah, yeah, Norman Powell, he's he's amazing. Man Robert dropped Covington, on his man first game. Him. Literally on his first game, man dropped, like, 35 or something uh, as 30. a Clipper. Yo, imagine that guy next to Kawhi and PG. You ready for that? That's what I'm yeah. saying. It's gonna, be, it's gonna be the next Kevin Love over in the corner while... Freaking Kawhi the new Braun going up in the paint. I mean, when the Kawhi bench, comes dude. back, and like when Kawhi said games, that's when Norman Powell wants to step up. Yep. I feel like it's gonna be. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm I feel like it's gonna be like. You know Kawhi, he can't play the back, right? Yeah. Yeah. I I feel like it's gonna be like Kevin Love, where like, uh, like Kevin Love was like the third option. And just kind of got open in, in the corner. And I feel like Norman Powell is going to do like something similar. With Kawhi and Paul George in the paint. I don't know if all that came through. but All I heard was Kawhi and Paul George in the paint. Norman Powell on the three. Kawhi and Paul George in the paint. Okay. That, that sounds good. I mean, hey, the Clippers, they're loaded with forwards. Modern NBA, you just need forwards, really. You just need forwards and a center, and you're good in the NBA. Yeah. But what I really want to say is this. All right, Portland, a little bit back on Portland. You really look at their trade. Why Why in the first place did they trade Gary Trent Jr.? Yeah. I'm not, I am mm-hmm. still, to this day, don't understand that trade. And even more now that you just flipped the guy you got for Gary Trent, who was older for nothing. Yep. Yeah. Dion Johnson. At that time, Dion it was Johnson. basically the same player. The, the top of the They played. And if we want to talk about Portland, like, if we want to talk about, like, Portland rebuilding and stuff, I'm really watching my bars, so I'm, like, only talking when the bars are there. Um, If we want to talk about, ah, if we want to talk about Portland rebuilding as well, they got rid of their draft picks by getting rid of Covington. For Robert Covington. Yeah. They got... They got rid of two first rounds for Covington, and then they traded Covington. So they they got rid of their draft picks. So it's like oh, I, what you the tools you could have used to rebuild you don't have anymore. Yeah, I, I don't understand it. I mean, hey, look, you got Anthony Simons, amazing player. That guy, hey, he's from Orlando, so that's my I, I hold a lot of a lot of pride with him. Same with Nazir Little. They're both looking great. They're but they both look good. So maybe those are pieces you could build off of. But, like, you can't sell Damian Lillard on this right now. And if I'm Damian Lillard, faithful to the grind, I don't know why he's still doing that. It's like, yeah, bro, just keep it moving. No one's, no I one's literally, gonna hold anything against you. I literally, clo- I literally closed my notepad. I literally closed my notepad that had all my notes on it for the podcast, and now I got full bars all the yeah. time. <laughs> um... But do you think, uh, speaking like back on the Nets thing, do you think that this Nets, uh, do you think the Nets will, oh my god, I keep cutting out again. Do you think the Nets will affect like how super teams are in the NBA if y'all watch that new Jimmy High Roller video? If y'all watch that new Jimmy mm-hmm. High Roller video? Yeah, I saw it. I have yeah. not watched Jimmy High Roller in a minute. He was talking about like talk how, about it on, uh, yeah. 
Say what you were going to say. I keep cutting in and out, so my bad. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know. We know. We know. We know. <laughs> <laughs> nah, they talked about it on the Through the Wire podcast, too. Yeah, it's bro. It's like super teams, they're going to change right now. You saw Lakers and you saw the Nets. They got Lakers at the beginning of the season. Everyone was like, oh, my God, what a team. Nets at the beginning of the season. Oh, my God, what a team. And neither of them worked at all. So it's like, all right, well, none of these work. Are we sure that this is the way of the future? And if you look at the Warriors, when they had their super team, that was a super team with no egos. But eventually the egos took over. Once they got into the, after they won their two back-to-back championships, you can see little by little there was frustration. But there's never going to be a super team like the Warriors where it's just guys that want to hoop. That have nothing else that they want to do except hoop. The Nets... So many different I mean, problems. that's the Bucks right now. Like, Giannis is so humble, and they said, like, um, I want to, I want to try and get his, I want to try and get Giannis's quote tatted on me. He was like, you know, you focus on your future, um, you focus on your future, that's your ego. You focus on your past, uh, or no, you focus on your past, that's your ego. You focus on your humility, or your future, that's your humility, and all that. Um, but Giannis, Giannis is humble. He said he just wants to hoop, and now he's winning championships. I, I was, I, I was done. If y'all wanna, <laughs> hang on. Can y'all? You cut off. That was why. Yeah, I know. Hang on. Yo, you're gonna, you're gonna have a lot of editing to do after this one. Yeah, you're gonna have to cut cut yourself out like No, but um, that's the that's the issue is I keep repeating myself <laughs> but the fans can hear me fine. Y'all can't The fans can hear me fine, y'all can't, that's the issue. That's good then, yeah. Bro. That makes sense. Well I mean when I'm we watch when I'm watching over there. Um but yeah, Giannis is humble and he just wants to hoop, bro. But speaking of Giannis, uh, sorry there's a lot of silence, guys. It's because I keep cutting out. Um, sorry, fans. Um, do y'all see that? Ah, I keep cutting out. I have my, my Wi-Fi bars over here, and I keep jumping up and down. Do y'all see the article that said Giannis is the new Tim Duncan? I want y'all to talk about that. It said there was an article... There's an article that said Giannis. Oh my God. There was an article that said Giannis is the new Tim Duncan. What do y'all think? Oh. You said it's an article saying that Giannis is the new Tim what? Tim Duncan? Yeah. Yeah. I you can't compare. I them. agree with that with the narratives that. And if Giannis haven't won the defensive player of the year, it's just straight in stone that he's literally Tim Duncan 2.0. Well, I mean, not with the, the dominance and everything, but I'm saying, like, like you know, with the accolades and everything, nobody really gave Tim Duncan his respect. True. Imagine Tim Duncan in this day and generation. I feel like they have they similar... I didn't I didn't read the I didn't read the full article but I think that like I think their main I think their main thing was about how they're both simply fundamental players sorta uh, here let me leave and join back again all right Into the Spidey verse. All right, so. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Am I coming through all right? Yeah, a little bit, a little no. bit. So I didn't read the full article, but I, I think I think it was saying like how they're both fundamental players. Like neither one of them is flashy. Yeah. Yeah, Giannis for sure. Flashy when he dunks, that's it though. Yeah, I would say Giannis dunking on people is kind of flashy. 
But like Giannis is humble about it though. Giannis is humble about it though. Not in the game. Yeah, well, not in the wow. game, but you get what I'm saying. Like they're both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah. They're both chill players. Yeah, they are. Um, they're really in it to play basketball for real. That's yeah. true. That is true. So I know I keep cutting out, so I may end it here in a minute because we're um real quick. Any other trade talks y'all want to get in real quick? Um. Oh, my favorite fit from the trade deadline. One of is Marvin Bagley on the Pistons. That's it. You really I like that trade. <laughs> I like Marvin Bagley on the Pistons. Now, what sucks is the Pistons get Marvin Bagley's dad, which sucks. But, <laughs> hey, Marvin Bagley on the Pistons' fresh start, you're actually, they suck. But at least you're on a decently ran franchise with a GM I mean, that knows. Yeah, I mean, they still got Jeremy Grant, though. So, I mean, yeah. don't they That's take, true. like, some of his position minutes? He's still going to get his. Jeremy Grant's not fighting with minutes for with Marvin Bagley. He's still going to get his, but... Do you think they're going to... Play Marvin Bagley a little bit at the five, see what he could do. Do you think they're going to play more... I uh? Do you think they're going to play more ISO with Cade or pick and rolls with Marvin Bagley? It should do more pick and rolls. If, it if, should. If Marvin Bagley could do pick and rolls. I haven't watched a lot of Marvin Bagley because... Because he's on the Kings. Right, like, he's too bad. Hmm? I was making a joke. I said you didn't see much of him because he was on the Kings. <laughs> oh, no. I watched the Kings. Exactly. Um, I think, like, the best player I loved that I used to watch on the Kings was actually um, De'Aaron Fox. There we go. Yes, De'Aaron Fox. Yeah, well, that's De'Aaron, Buddy Hill. Well, I mean, recently it was Tyrese. I mean. Do you take De'Aaron Fox? You are on my Instagram page. You know I cover yeah. the scenes, bro. De'Aaron Fox or Tyrese? Yeah. You said what? De'Aaron Fox or Tyrese? Because Jeremy takes Tyrese. I take De'Aaron Fox. Oh, yeah. I heard y'all talking about that. I um, would Tyrese. I, I rather would see Tyrese playing with DeMonte Sabonis than De'Aaron Fox. Yep. That pick and roll. DeMonte Sabonis on yeah. a pick and roll, pick and pop. I like yeah, De'Aaron Fox's right. playmaking. You know, the Kings, they're doing fan service. They're trying to make a playoff push. So they could stop, you know, getting hated on. Whole, yeah, they just want, kill the whole. We haven't they, made the playoffs in so long. They want to stop. Yep. They want to stop being the butt of the joke. You said what, Nathan? They want to stop being the butt of the joke for the last fifteen years. Yeah, <laughs> like they had the Marcus Cousins, Tyreek Evans. They had um, Mike Bibby. Oh no, Mike Bibby got traded. They, uh, hey. they they had talent before, like Kevin Martin and all that. You know what I'm saying? But they yeah. not, passed, they're in the West, huh? Yeah, they've passed on hella draft picks that yep. could have been great players. Mm -hmm. They've made all the mistakes. Hey, and I can't hold them. The Magic, we we made a playoff push with Vucevic just to get rid of the of the drought. So I can't yep. hold them for not wanting to just end the drought and then start your rebuild. Because I will then, say. Even if you lose in five games, it still feels nice to be in the playoffs after X amount of years. Yo, that I feel, Nate, you should know this as a Spurs fan. Cause What's up? You know, us not making the playoffs, and we just been – we've been doused and freaking hitting the playoffs every year. And we, yeah, we stopped making the playoffs, and, our you know, most of our fan base has been toxic ever since that. You know? Yeah, bro. <laughs> the yeah. Spurs have a winning so culture, and then, like – T Tony, Manu, and TD left, and now everybody's like, ah, oh, the Spurs. But, yeah, dude, I get what you're saying. Yeah, so. What do you think? When do you think we'll break the record? Do you think we'll break it? You said what? When do you think we'll break the record? Against the Lakers or the Kings? I hope it's it against the Lakers. <laughs> hey, KVD is going to draw 30 again, bro. Yeah, bro. That will be so poetic. I'm hoping we get it against. I, I'm hoping. I'm hoping we get it at a. I'm hoping we. Ah, I keep cutting out. I hope we get it at a home game. So Kings or Lakers. Uh, yeah. 
That would be well, I mean, I hope we win, like, more games than, you know. Cause last night, it was very winnable, but we couldn't stop DeMar DeRozan. Yeah, bro, I was Nobody at work. Stop DeMar DeRozan. I was at work, and I was like, we're winning in the third quarter, and then we lost. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, DeMar, he dropped 19 points in the fourth quarter. That's, bro, that's nobody dominant. can stop that, man. Yeah. yeah. Did you see the thing? Um... Actually, CJ, I think. You said, huh? I think CJ's the one that sent it. Did you see the thing about Damar and MJ? What? Oh, you talking about thirty six, um, six games straight? Uh, I think yeah, that's I what it was. That. Yeah. And then. Um. Yeah. yeah, 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 for sure. Um, yeah, this man, Damar. You know, people calling him modern day Jordan. And it's finally showing yeah. that. It, yeah. Yeah. I see that. It's finally showing it. Like, so, you know, do man. you think? Do you think he should win MVP? He should be the MVP. No, it's obviously Giannis, but Giannis is yeah, not bro. Get it, so. Yeah. He should be in the talks, though. I give him that. He should be in talks. Giannis won't yeah, get it because Giannis yeah. won't get it. Giannis won't get it because he's already gotten it twice, and he give it to somebody else for like media. They'll probably give for it to Embiid this year. Huh? They'll probably just give it to Embiid this year. Yeah. Just for the narrative. You said Embiid? Yeah. yeah. The NBA is a business yeah. at the end of the day. That's what I was going to say. I was like, if it's not if it's not Giannis, give it to Embiid. And if it's not Embiid, yeah. give it to Jokic. Embiid. The... Been, oh, look, his second best player didn't play at all, and they're still such a great team. Joel Embiid yeah. is an amazing leader. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, spin the narrative. Give it to him. Be the the NBA is a business at the end of the day, so they're gonna oh. they're gonna give it to Embiid. Yep. Hopefully, hopefully. Yeah, uh, um. How y'all feel about the East being so stacked this year? I hate it. <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Here's a good. Here's a good. Um. What? Here's a good argument. We were having in the group chat last night. If LeBron had to play yeah. in the West, if LeBron had to play in the West, do you think he'd have half as many finals appearances? Oh, LeBron? If LeBron had to play in the West, would he have as many finals appearances? You said Michael Jordan? Nah. If if LeBron played in the West, would he have as many finals appearances? I don't know, bro. Uh, no. Thank you, no, bro. We wouldn't. Are we? We were talking. Yeah. If he would have had the. Uh, we were talking the other night, uh, and we were saying LeBron was playing against like the fifteen and fifty Suns. It's like, bro. It's like the East was like pussies back then. Yes. Well, I mean, you talking about during with whoever. Michael Jordan or LeBron? We're talking about LeBron. Would LeBron have as many finals appearances if he played in the West versus the East? So if he played in the West. Like we're I mean, wait, 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 wait. Like he went What's to the, the Like if we if we drop Braun on a random West team. If we drop Braun on a random West team, he ain't going as far as he did in the East. Cause he has now, way more competition in the West. Well, are we having LeBron with the exact same teams that he went to the finals with, or are we just dropping them on random teams? Either or. Like, I feel like Braun is, like, there's more comp- there's more competition in the West. Yes. Like, especially back then. So, I don't think he's going as far. I don't think I he's don't going know. as far. I don't know. I don't think he would, but that's not a, a topic I can hold against him either. It's like, hey, you yeah. still got it done. Yeah, true. It's another what if, I guess, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. It's, just, yeah. it's the thing I give Nets fans. I give Nets, uh, I, ki- I give shit to Nets fans because they're like, what if they were healthy? And I was like, well, guess what? It's a what if they weren't. Deal with it. Um. So I, I keep cutting out, so I'm going to go ahead and end it. Do you all have anything you all want to say? Pimp your stuff or whatever? Um. I don't- Nothing for real, bro. I mean, it's it's been nice having me. All right. Well, 
That is uh. I will say this though. Good, good. If Cole Anthony wins the dunk contest, or if any of the Orlando Magic players win Rising Stars MVP, I'm gonna just be happy. That's it. Evan Mobley's still the Evan Mobley's still the Rookie of the Year though. Hey, I didn't say Rookie oh. of the Year. I said Rising Stars you, MVP. You ride in Franz Wagner just because he on the Magic, bro. Of course, like, <laughs> how could I not? Alonzo well, Wagner is the top three rookie in this draft. Thank it's Evan you. Mobley. Evan Mobley wins it easy. People are trying Evan to say Mobley. Josh Giddy is better. For me, I'll just get. J- it's hard to grade him, but Franz Wagner is on the same level. Scotty Barnes. Scotty Barnes is play on a better team. Bro, all Josh Giddy did. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, bro. All Josh Giddy did was get a triple double. That's it. Well, he's got <laughs> like three or four of them, but Franz Wagner yeah. is better than Josh Giddy. I will die on this. Yeah, field. you're right, Jeremy. All right. True. Well, anything else or no? Really it. All right. All star break. Can't wait. Yeah, we'll t- have more about that after um, next episode. We'll talk about all star stuff. So, in case I cut out, in case I cut out, right. ah, yeah. In in case I cut out, if I leave, that means I press stop recording. You said what? In case I cut out, if I press, Nathan, oh my god, on. god, I'm gonna text it. I'm gonna text it. Nathan, All right, you're dying. We gonna have to do this another day. Yeah, bro. Nathan, I'm gonna just text it. I'm gonna just text it. Yeah. The whole time. And me time. cutting in and out, it was so bad. Like I, I just, <laughs> I'm so, I'm sorry on my end, but Nathan, you. You lagging during the whole time. Bro. I know. I'm trying to figure out why. Sorry. <laughs> said like, no, my I'm brother so watching Thursday, YouTube. I'm so down. Huh? Thursday night? I probably am. Can't commit yet. Though. We can try again for Thursday like, night. You tell me when y'all not busy, and I will totally do this again. Yeah, we, bro. I mean, we definitely, I mean, not like a redo, but you know what I'm saying? Like, we could yeah. probably be putting more topics, but yeah. yeah, we definitely need to do this again. All right. For sure. Because Nathan, you... Yeah, I don't know what it is. <laughs> Alright, if I leave. Are you trying to leave? If I leave, it means I ended recording. That's what I've been trying to say. <laughs> I guess he said if he leaves, he ended recording. Yes. Okay. Alright, so Nathan Bunnett, episode 22. Sorry for all the technical difficulties and all that. We may try and re record this, but we'll see. All right, yes. uh, Jeremy and CJ, I will see y'all later. Uh, amazing guest, and peace out. Peace out. Later. Later. Uh, lots of technical difficulties there, but it is what it is. All right, I will see y'all in the next one, guys. This, this, this is not okay. This needs to stop now. Hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right.